not about my wife. It's not about my daughter. It's really just about me and just being able to look in the mirror every day that if you say you're going to do something, are you going to get into it and then quit later? This was the start of that mm -hmm. journey of just knowing like it, it begins here. If you quit here, you're going to allow yourself to quit at any point in life. Hey, what's up? I'm Steve Eckert, United States Marine, entrepreneur and instructor of the project. Welcome to the MDK Project Show. That's the modern day night project show. This is a show about men in search of meaningful transformations in their family, fitness, finances, and faith so that they could reach full fulfillment in their lives through hardships and adversity, physical, mental, and emotionally, so that they could become even better husbands, fathers, leaders, and freaking men. Today, I wanna welcome a very special guest, a graduate of class 005. What's up, freak? How's it going, Steve? Andy Foe, just Andy, just introduce yourself, let us know where you're from everything about you? Uh, I'm 32, grew up, and I'm back in New York right now. Uh, tattoo artist based out of there, and we're looking to relocate to Austin. Uh, have my wife out there and my two and a half year old, Ellie. Yeah. Awesome, good stuff, good stuff. So let's let's jump right into it. Uh, first of all, so you graduated 005. How long ago has that been since you graduated now? Uh, that was June of last year, so a little under a year. Awesome, good stuff. So before you started, you know, I've, I met you a couple of times. You came to some of our business workshops, like mentorships and stuff in the past. What was it that made you feel like you needed to sign up for something like the project? Like, where were you at at that point? Because you, you looked like you were pretty squared away, had your shit together. But obviously, sometimes people look like they have their stuff yeah, together yeah. to society. But inside, they feel like they're, there's something missing or lacking or whatever it is. So what was the reason that you felt the need to, to sign up for the project? I think that's with a lot of us. We we tend to put on a, a facade on social media in person. You know, we want to be shown as you know well-off individuals, but internally we always have some sort of struggle going on. Um, and I I found out about the project through Bedros, um, and I followed him. My brother did his full sleeve tattoo, so I got to hear about the project through that. And it was January of last year. I think that was class three or something. Um, it really got my attention because I just felt I was falling short in what was constantly being, you know, told the four F bombs, your finance, your fitness, um, your family and your faith. And I, I was just falling apart in all those things. I was working too much. I wasn't spending time at home. My fitness was shit. And uh, I did the questionnaire in January. You know, you have to fill out, you know, what your fear is, what, what are you trying to achieve? And I just realized I had so many things I was lacking. And I said, you know what, before I pay somebody to help me out, let me just do this by myself. So I didn't commit to that class. And I spent a couple months trying actually i remember i called you I, yeah because your name i saw you filled it out and that yeah. was a long time before you ever showed up that was right a, i a tried time. to work through it but when you don't have that support system or you don't have the knowledge or the insight to actually go through it you just go through your own childhood experience the people that are around you and i, I didn't have the the guidance to actually make those breakthroughs myself um you know i was working five six seven days a week eight to twelve hours a day i wasn't seeing my family my daughter was growing up uh, me and my wife, we weren't talking a lot because I was working. So I just really needed to have that breakthrough, number one, in my family. I knew my fitness needed improvements. My finances really uh, wasn't at the best. You know, I was $120,000 in, in debt. And that was just the circle that I was used to being in, you know, just workhorses and just spending money and really just not being at home. Um, and I, I just knew Bedros as an individual and I saw what you guys were putting out as far as what the project could transform men to become. And I, I grew up in a household full of women. I didn't really have too many male role models. So it was just kind of a weird transition to like, at the age of 31, to be more of a man. You know, I, I didn't really know what that meant because I didn't have that sort of guidance. Mm -hmm. So then it comes time to uh, April, I hired Bedros as my coach, as my mentor. And after talking to him through all the things that I needed to work through, he says, I think the project is something that you should go through because we're just going to go through our coaching calls talking about stuff that you would learn in 75 hours. So I said, you know what, if my coaches, my mentor is telling me this is something that I need to do, then you have to follow through with it and just signed up for it. And it was a little under two months. I had time to mentally and physically train for it and then just kind of push through, you know, and I just knew I had to get through because how could you fail that? program which your mentor runs yeah, and he recommends yeah. you how could you take any advice 
and execute yeah, on it. Show up it. to the next yeah. coaching call like a fucking loser. That's like, right. Damn, I, I quit. I rang the bell. Yeah. This, this just can't happen, right? Right. So I just had to commit to it. So class 005 is what I signed up for, and that's where I graduated. Awesome. So already we're a few minutes in with Andy Ford. I have already two or three just take-homes for you already. We could, we could quit, cut the interview now, and you could get enough information right now. First thing was... Quit the bullshit on the social medias. You didn't lose weight because you're doing some fitness programs because your ass is broke. So stop flashing all that fucking money. You're eating government cheese. So quit the bullshit on the social media because you're, it's a facade that you're living under. The second thing is that you said was you thought you tried to do it on your own. Yeah. And so realize you have to realize you, you can't do shit on your own. Nothing great, no great success or achievement is ever accomplished alone. It, nothing in life. So that's, that's the next thing. And the next thing that stood out to me that you said was you needed to be around other men, other successful, hungry, motivated men, like-minded men, because yeah. men need to be around other men or else we lose our masculinity. And shit, that's what's going on in the world right now with yeah. all the, the tight nut hugger jean shorts and all this other shit going on out there. Like, so that's already some just bombs right there. Like that could literally just those three points right there can already change the entire trajectory of your life. So off to a, a good start there. That's some good stuff right there. So leading up to the project, you only had about two months, you said. Yeah. What were some of your fears or hesitations? You kind of said what your, your fears or hesitations were before you signed up. Once you kind of signed up, what were some of the things going through your head as you were preparing? What were the, the fears, hesitations that either you had or maybe your wife had? Or where, where were you at when it came to that? I studied anything I could find on the project. I was searching hashtags, past members, like any videos, YouTube, Google searches. I, I did my best to get a head start and just see what the project was about. I did more research on... Uh, military boot camps, you know, buds training, uh, go rucks, you know, Spartan rate. Like I just try to get myself into that mental preparation um, because I think I'm, I was physically more fit than most people I was around, but I, I don't think that I was at the physical um, conditioning that I needed to be. And I think you always say like, you know, I'm the, I'm the slowest, fittest person. I'm the weakest, fittest person because I always just fell behind in every evolution. So physically I knew I had some challenges there. Um, it was also a, a, a mental capacity that I needed to meet because mm -hmm. I don't I don't know how I would have done under knowing that it was low sleep, low food, um, extreme, you know, physical working, mental challenges. What are you talking about? You're going to scare everyone away. Yeah. It's it's we have a great time. Every 45 <laughs> minutes there's foot rubs, we have cold beers. Inside your water, you see the canteens looks all like cool military. There's fucking umbrellas there's in there. Cookies, it's like a there's resort. Pizza. Yeah, it's yeah, a yeah. Resort. Th th those were good. There were some pizzas, there's yeah. burritos and pizza all kinds yeah, of good stuff. Yeah, I remember those. <laughs> But uh, I, I just knew I had to mentally get there. And that was probably the most terrifying thing was, am I going to sign up for this? Am I going to train? Am I going to tell my family um, that I'm going to take a week off and prepare for this big life transforming event and quit? Um, and that, that's just something that I, I, I had to be ready to face. And I, I, what, I didn't want to go in there and and essentially quit, you know, to fail myself, to fail my family. Um, I just had to have these, these moments of clarity, you know, because I was going through a lot in, in business with family as well. Um, and I, I just didn't know how to navigate those waters. And, you know, that was something that I hope the project helped me through. And it, it certainly did, you know. So then, and you just mentioned about getting away from work for a week. Obviously, if you're from your family for a week, that's hard enough, especially if you have a, a young daughter, that's tough to be away for a week. But then on the business side, you're a tattoo artist, so if you're not actually tattooing, you're not getting paid until you did start your own your coaching program. But right, right. back then, I think your coaching program hadn't started or was just getting started, right? Yeah, so yeah. it wasn't like a significant source yet of income, right? It was right. still just literally just tattooing barely, people. Barely so, getting, yeah, so we're, we're laborers. You know, If we don't do the work, we don't make any money. So how did you justify getting away for a week that you're not able to put ink on people's bodies? That's a big hit to you financially. How did you justify it to your wife and to yourself? And how did you even make that happen and make it doable? It's, it's a time investment. You know, you spend a week off for, a, hopefully, if you pass, a lifetime of lessons so that you can be more efficient at your four F-bombs. And financially, it, it wasn't the, the biggest constraint, I think, again, minus being, you know, in debt. But if we just had to spend a little bit more to learn how to get out of that and how to, you know, be more successful in our business and in our fitness and in our family and our faith, I was willing to add just a little bit more onto that. Mm -hmm. And I think it was within six months, you know, Bedros and the team has just been able to kind of coach me through making better decisions and uh, just really pushing for what is necessary in life. So my wife didn't have an issue too much with the money aspect of it. Um, 
it was just more so the time commitment of just knowing that she couldn't talk to me while I was there. She, you know, one of the things that I was looking forward to was just kind of the one of the evolutions. And, you know, this is probably a later topic, but, you know, I, I meditate on my death a lot, you know, so just knowing that we're going to go through these evolutions. There's a possibility that, you know, you could get hurt or you could die. I could sprain my wrist and I can't tattoo anymore. Um, it's a sacrifice. You know, it's an investment that you're going to make in yourself that hopefully you're going to get through it. And my wife went through her own evolution of a week of not knowing mm -hmm. how her husband was doing, you know. So we, we all learned a lot through that particular week. Um, but to justify that week off, it, it's just a lifelong lesson that you're just going to condense within 75 hours. That's awesome. Yeah, because we get men all the time that say, you know, their relationship with their wife is fucked up. Their, their kids don't look up to them as a role model. Their business is struggling. And then they can't come to the project, they say, because they can't get away from work for a week because they will they have to do the actual work. And that will be the reason for not doing it. So what you're saying is you were forward thinking enough to realize yeah. this hit of just a week is going to be well worth it in the long run because I'm already need help in areas of A, B, and C. So this is going to be worth it. A little extra week hit on the, the salary is going to – yeah be worth more than worth the investment absolutely awesome awesome yeah stuff. you don't you don't pay that money for the 75 hours you pay for the lifelong lessons and the relationships you build after the project so you already kind of pretty much said it but what was it that when when shit got hard during the project there's a time every man no matter what no matter who you are when you're going through the project there's a point that you're like what the fuck am i doing here like i'm ready to go home like yeah. what was it that was your trigger, your button that you could push inside you mentally, emotionally, that made you not quit? That when it got to those rough points, what was it that you, where would you go mentally right. to, to make you not quit? I, I had several. Um, I think the easiest one was, you know, Bedris is my mentor. He's running this program. How could you continue to work with somebody and quit? Um, the other one was my family to just, again, make the commitment to say, hey, I'm going to spend a week away to sacrifice that time from you to be a better man, a better person. Uh, to just know that, hey, I have to book a flight home early to tell you I tried and I quit. I think they, they would have said, it's okay, you tried, but how I would live with that is a whole nother thing. That's not okay. Uh, and I, I, it's not they okay. They could have said it's okay. It wouldn't have been okay for you. It wouldn't have been okay for them, even yeah. though they said it. That's just a woman trying to be nice. Right. It's bullshit. And, uh, you know, we're, we're thankful for that kind of support, but I was just looking for, to dig deep down within myself of just knowing how do I look my daughter, who was, you know, two at the time, she wouldn't have known any better, but um, how do I look at her and tell her, like, it, it, it's okay to give up, it's okay to quit? Like, how bad do you want something? You know, how, how much of a better person do you want to be? You have to be willing to commit to it and push forward through whatever it takes. So you have to live by example. And I think people will really see past, you know, whatever you say and you, you put out on social media. You know, if you're going to be that person that's going to do whatever it takes, then you have to live by example and just get through it. So the 75 hours was just that, that first taste into a new way of living, you know, that, that project mentality. And past all of that, when things really get hard, it's not about Bedros, it's not about my wife, it's not about my daughter, it's really just about me and just being able to look in the mirror every day that if you say you're gonna do something, are you gonna get into it and then quit later? this was the start of that mm -hmm. journey of just knowing like it, it begins here. If you quit here, you're going to allow yourself to quit at any point in life. And then imagine and, your two-year-old daughter, she's older, seven, eight years old in a, in a soccer game, in a playoff game, in, the, in right. a soccer league, and her team's down by two goals and you're on the sideline. She comes over, she's like, daddy, we lost. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to quit. And you're going to give her this speech about, no, it's never over. Do whatever it takes. Go out there. You can't quit. You have to just attack it. Go for it. You can still come back. Imagine giving her that speech if it, you, it doesn't if come, you had quit. It, it doesn't come quit. from the heart. It, it comes from a false sense of like, this is what you, you could achieve, but dad, you didn't achieve it. And she may not say that because she may not know, but inside, like, there is a feeling of like, you're kind of false. You know, you're not true. You know, I'm a said. believer that the universe will, even at two years old, that the universe will, will send know. that signal yeah. to her, even as a two-year-old subconsciously. I'm a, I'm a believer in that, yeah. that definitely. Speaking of subconscious, I have to ask you this. We're going to get into some of the evolutions and I want to hear about what are some of your favorite evolutions. But first... Your, cl your class, we used to, we have, we do a PFT test here in the, in the beginning, right? When they start off, so they need to be fresh. Your class didn't do the PFT test in the beginning. So what we used to do when I very cordially greeted your group, we would do some kind of introductory PT. They're right there in the parking lot where, where I'm picking you up with the buses. And I'm new to California. I'm from New York. So 
I never knew what the ground is like or whatever. So I had you guys do some push-ups, right? Uh -huh. And you were down there for a couple of seconds. And, and next thing you know, we're hearing like popping and we're smelling bacon and all this Everyone's other stuff. Ooh and eyeing. Yeah, it hurts. I'm like, what a bunch of pussies. Like, what, are the, what is the problem? We just did like a few push-ups. Then you'd bear crawl and literally we're like minutes into it. And it turns out the ground was scorching hot. It was June. Someone, no one gave me the fucking memo that in June you can't do a set of push-ups on the ground. Like that yeah. was not, that was totally not intentional. Yeah. That was just... So a lot of the guys got little blisters on their hands and stuff. How the fuck? Everyone there had blisters on their hands. We get back, you know, move on to the next portion, and your hands are immaculate. Yeah. Not a scratch on them, nothing, like, not a single fucking blister. And yeah. it's like you weren't doing the stuff, because I'm watching everyone. They're yeah, all yeah. on the ground. You were on the floor doing it. Yep. I still can't wrap my head around it. Like, what the fuck happened? How did you not get any blisters on your hand? Every single guy there did. That, that was hour zero. We, we just... We just met you guys, you know, and the first thing was get down and, and do push-ups. And everyone's ooh and eyeing, and it was just like, well, fuck it. If we have to do this for four hours, like, this is what the project consists of. If we have to do this for 75 hours, this is what it is. Um, and, I, and everyone felt the initial pain of just a hot floor. Um, and this is something that I picked up from tattooing, that when your mind says something hurts, it's going to initiate a physiological response. So you've been tattooed before. Uh, I know when clients are in pain because they'll start to swell, they'll bleed more, they'll turn red, um, and they just won't sit well. It was the same thing when we were doing those push-ups or through any evolution. The moment you hyper-focus on that pain, your body's gonna send, your mind is gonna send a physiological response to your body saying, hey, this is not normal, we're gonna blister, we're gonna swell, we're gonna bleed, we're gonna turn red. I had to disassociate from that pain and mentally just look somewhere else and not even think about my hands. I was on the floor the same amount of time as everybody else. I think and you had to have cheated. You had to have some secret gloves on or something because that was the weirdest shit. Nothing. And I'm a big believer in the power of the mind. Like, yeah. I, I study it. I'm, like, obsessed with the power yeah. of the mind. And even after your class, like, you don't even realize the impact it's had on me. After just that, I'm like, I got to even focus on my mind more because how did this motherfucker outthink blisters? Like, how did you outmind power a fucking physical blister on the ground? Like, yeah. it was some crazy shit. Well, it's, if, if you have a headache, you're going to focus on your headache. The moment you stub your toe, you get injured, that headache goes away. So it's a matter of just shifting your perspective mm -hmm. on like what you want to focus on. So in the project, you don't focus on whatever the pain is. You focus on the ability, the opportunity to go through this fun 75 hours with the rest of these, these individuals. Um, so really, it's just not hyper-focusing on the pain. It's really just mind over matter is just so cliche, but it's, it's, I think, the truth. And you've seen it. Like my hands were the least seared <laughs> compared to everybody else. It was fucking crazy. So other than that, other than the, the fun welcome that I gave you there in the parking lot of the, of the lovely resort that we picked you up at, what, what was some of your favorite moments, evolutions, uh, tasks that you had to do during the actual course itself? We kind of talked about building up to it. So let's go into the meat of the actual project. Yeah. During the 75 hours, what were some of your favorite moments or favorite evolutions? Favorite is subjective. And what I was looking forward to was the ice bath because uh, I used to have a pool and in the winter time, I would just jump into the pool of you know, 32 degrees. And that was just my you know, relaxation, my meditation, my, the way to mentally test myself. So the ice bath was, was the least difficult for me. Um, favorite as far as what I've learned a lot about myself was the long, brutal crawl through the pit which everyone will get welcome to at some point. You were a stud in the pit, weren't you? Yeah, you were a stud. yeah, yeah. I, I was leading from the back. <laughs> and uh, I just remember going through the physical pain. And again, I have tattoos. I value my artwork. And just to know that I'm crawling on the floor, I'm scratching myself up. I think most tattooers were just like, I, I can't do this. Like, I, I, I spend too much time and pain on my art. Like, why would I go through this? But again, the, what the value you would get out of that is, is far reaching beyond what you did in the past. Mm -hmm. And I just had to go through it. I went to a really dark place. And I just had to, again, disconnect from that particular pain and just say one crawl at a time, which is probably why I was the fastest crawler at the very back. You were just, you wanted to take a, you wanted to keep an eye on the team, make yeah. sure everyone's good. So you were staying, you know, yeah. three, 400 yards behind. That was a good strategy. Yeah. It, just, and, it only took us like eight, nine fucking hours. Right. But. And uh, I needed several triggers to keep pushing through. Um, you know, Ray came to me and he talked about his daughter being his motivation, his father also being murdered the same way as mine. And uh, those are things that were, were just very powerful to me. Um, even you just challenging me in a different way of, if you stop moving again, we're gonna redo the whole thing. And that was just a 
way to dig into myself of like, you really had more to give. You know that, right? Like you could have kept going, but you decided to comfortably go. And I felt like I was giving everything, but the moment I knew I had to redo the whole thing if I didn't keep pushing, that really changed the trajectory on everything that I did afterwards mm -hmm. of like, you're not as tired as you seem. Like you have so much more to give. And why not do it right the first time, go all out the first time instead of, we've had guys, we've had things we had to do to redo three, four times. Yep. You're obviously more tired than you're more beaten up in the fourth time and they'll get it done quicker. Yeah. Like obviously there was so much left in the tank mentally yeah. and physically that they just leave in like, why not just fucking attack it? get it done the first time, not even have to redo it. Like right. move on to something else, get some learning in. Yeah, and in those 75 hours, the, the longer it goes, the, tire, the more tired you are, the less sleep you have, the less food that you've had to consume. And we're actually performing way better towards the end of the program. You know, we're, we're lifting more, we're running faster. And that was one of the craziest things. I, I wasn't really a, a good runner at the time. I was maybe doing nine minute miles, uh, which is good in my circle, you know, that I, that I was used to, but the, the project, candidate status like that that was not okay and each day that we ran a new mile it was just getting faster and faster and even with Aaron at the very end the last day I did a 750 mile which was the fastest I ever ran and I looked at him when he told me the time I was like I don't know how you guys do this but you managed to help us pull more of ourselves each time so now every time I do a workout or I'm tattooing longer I'm just testing myself could I do one more mile? Could I go a little bit faster? Could I try mm -hmm. a little bit harder? And every time the answer is always yes. And to be clear, you're talking about the, the, the running throughout the, those four days, right? Yeah, yeah. Like literally. So we're, we're already walking a bunch. We're already hiking yeah. a bunch. So day we're one, ready. you're fresh. Yeah. The time was one thing. Slow. Then day two, you're starting to fade with sleep and food and you got yeah. a little bit faster. Yeah. And by day four, you're done and beat to hell and fucking tortured and yeah. you had your best time of yeah. your life. Yeah. That's fucking crazy how that works, right? Yeah. Uh, and, and just, what did you, what did you just do yesterday? Uh, I did my first marathon and ultra marathon. So I ran 31 miles. The longest I ran was 18 before. And we just had a good group of guys that we were, we, we just say project that shit. Every time we meet up, anytime someone puts up a challenge, a bunch of us just raise a hand and say, all right, we're going to do it. So right before the project, we've got a whole week of also staying up and, and working just as hard, if not harder than the rest of these guys. And then we all decided to say, let's do an ultra marathon beforehand. Uh, that's done. We're recovered. We're fine. We're ready to roll. It was just yesterday. We're recovered. Yeah. And that's the thing. You're here to help out with this class coming up, class 008, as a junior instructor. And I'm sure you've spoken to other junior instructors. Behind the scenes, you guys are, are working. You're, yeah. you're putting in just as many hours and just as much physical effort and hands-on work, like setting things up behind the scenes. Like you guys, the junior instructors, are what helps the machine keep rolling. So that's going to be grueling for you. It's like going through the project a second time for you. Yeah. You're going to also pick up so many lessons from the other side. But so you chose to do, what was your longest run you've done before that? 18 miles. 18 miles. You yeah. chose to do 31 miles in the sand on top of that, yep. in, on the beach, mm -hmm. not even on the road, nice comfort, like yep. in the sand, sloshy and sticky. Your socks probably getting all soggy and sand inside them yeah. while you're doing it just to add to the suffer fest of it all probably right that's got to be more of a challenge even I, I call it like a recertification you know we did the project great we don't live on our past triumph successes so every time there's a new class we decide to just raise our hand and say like what else are we capable of how much more can we do uh i've done with you the 130 mile bike ride from uh you know chino hills to san diego that was before another class so every time there's a new class even in between that we continue to try to push our limits a little bit further and just say like, what else are we capable of? You and know? also to be clear, before the project, you weren't some marathon runner or no. track star in high school or any of this shit. Like no. the part, if you didn't get the part about the pit when we were saying he was watching from the behind, he was slow as fuck. <laughs> in case you didn't catch on to that, I told him he was the, the fattest fit looking person I've ever seen. He looks like ripped and lean and he was crawling like a fucking snail. But in the, 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 from then to now, like what you're doing now, and it's not even a year later, and the shit you've accomplished in that year, people don't do not even one of those things in a lifetime. You right. did like eight, nine of them within a year. It's yeah. just, it's fucking awesome watching your transformation from, you. from the outside. That's good stuff. So that was the good stuff, the fun stuff. What was your least favorite either moment or evolution during the project? Uh, th there's, there's a symbol of, of the bell. You know, if you decide to quit voluntarily, you walk up in front of everybody and you give your reason and you ring the bell. That sound, when we've heard it several times in our class, it, it kind of strikes like something in the center of like, that is 
a grown man, a human being deciding that they're going to voluntarily sign up for something and then voluntarily quit? How else are they going to continue to go through life and know that they're, they're probably going to repeat that same habit? Mm -hmm. um, so ringing the bell came up twice for me mentally. One was The first one was in the pit. That was the least favorite. And we had to go to the pit several times. Uh, good luck with the rest of the classes because I said, it, man, if, if you make us go through the pit again, I don't know if I can make it. But as you get towards the end, you realize, again, we're capable of doing so much more. Mm -hmm. But when you're actually going through the 75 hours, it's a whole other thing. Um, so that was the first time that I, I really struggled. I had to find my, my reasons, my why to be able to get through it. And I went through the list of, you know, what made me not ring the bell. And the second one was when we had to do, uh, you know, the log carry, the long hikes, coming back. You know, we, we asked the stupid question and then we had to redo the log carry again. And just to know that you physically did something exhausting and now you have to do it again. What kind we, of we, asshole we, would make you have to redo something over again? I don't even get it. So we, we walked, we had to walk past the bell again and we were carrying the logs. We were already exhausted and I was just eyeing the bell on my way there. And the moment I passed the bell, a switch happened and I said, we're not putting this log down. We, this is part of the project. Like this is part of life. This is the evolution. So we're going to go to the end and come back. There was no second guessing it anymore. As soon as I passed that, um, that was the, the realization for me of like, I, I can never ring a bell again. So those were the two least favorites because I, I thought about it. I, I mm -hmm. mentally broke, but when you break down each evolution of what we did, it's not physically impossible. Like you're not making us lift a thousand pounds or anything just just carry a log for x amount of x amount of time just crawl for x amount of time mm -hmm. you can push a little bit more um so everything else was difficult in his own way but those were the two that i i kind of broke down a bit but redeemed myself and just kept pushing through awesome and we didn't mention in the beginning but you're you were the honor man of class 005 there's always an honor man of each class where you are unanimously voted from your peers, the fellow graduates and the instructors. And it has to be a unanimous vote mm -hmm. or else it just doesn't happen. So you're the honor man of class 005. Congratulations on that again. Thank That's you. just fucking awesome. You're just, even your transformation in those 75 hours, like from where you started to where you finished was just awesome. And now a year later. So what were some of your immediate, like immediately implementable things that you took home with you to the project day one what are some things that right away i know there's some longer term stuff that takes mm -hmm. some while to kick in yeah. but what were some of the immediate like tangible changes and impact it had in your life when you you first stepped foot back home uh c communication was the biggest thing you know so i i went into the project just with uh you know some business some financial issues um and i, I learned how to tattoo from my brother so you know we we ended up having several conversations beforehand Kind of had a couple, you know, little disagreements. It's just a difference in, in business and life philosophies. And after those several meetings, we had to have, you know, one more meeting, you know, to just kind of really clear the air. And that was another big reason of why I couldn't ring the bell because that meeting was a Sunday after the project. Mm -hmm. So communication was very big because I had to have a heart to heart and just kind of share what my thoughts were. I, I just, I thought I was good at being a leader. I thought I was good at communicating, but the project exposes the weakness, you know, and, and your inabilities there. So after the project on Sunday, we met up and, you know, just spent three hours of talking the first two hours of just going back and forth. And then the last hour, just really having that breakthrough of just being able to be truthful and honest and just sharing who you are, what you're trying to achieve, understanding the other person, listening, being compassionate. Uh, I thought I had those things, but I didn't mm -hmm. really grasp them fully until the project when we have to give feedback for others, to receive feedback from ourselves, you know, to be honest and to know what do we want to achieve out of this lifetime that we have to live, which is so finite. So when I had to go through that meeting, it was really just having the, the direct breakthrough of communicating with somebody who didn't quite understand me. Maybe perhaps I didn't understand him, but as brothers, like we hugged it out, we cried, we understood each other. Like we had that ultimate bonding that day and everything was, was great at that particular moment. But you know, as they say from there, everything else is history. So communication was the biggest one. And then I thought I was pretty good at communicating with my wife as well. But now, you know, we, we tend to communicate even better. Um, instead of imposing my thoughts or what we should do, it's kind of humbling yourself and just, you know, you're not right all the time. You know, just, just take a moment to listen, see what the perspectives are 
and and try to try to be a better listener, try to be more compassionate, and uh, that that was the number one biggest takeaway was how to communicate, how to listen. So you graduated on a Friday and literally implemented it into some major areas of your life by Sunday, like right it, away. Yeah, it was it was family, finance, and faith. Those are like the immediate takeaways, and then the fitness was just a natural progression, mm-hmm. evolution after that. Would that that meeting you had on Sunday would that have been possible or ha- or even been even close to the way it was if you didn't ju- had just finished going through the project? It would have been possible, but the outcome may have been different. Right, right. Yeah, of course, good stuff. So now you're a year later, about a year later. What are some of the now the longer term effects after graduating the project? Like that was like immediately you went home and were able to implement like a motherfucker. Like that's that's how you do stuff. Take action. That's awesome. But now a year later, almost a year later, what are some of now the longer term effects? Because some things a month later probably catch in your head. You're like, that's why we did the certain thing this way, or that's how I should be reacting in this situation. Anything? How, how long longer term impacts have you had since graduating? It's a matter of you know, not being stuck in your own world and your own suffering and just looking up and just realizing, you know, we, we have a lot of blessings. We, there's a lot of things to be grateful for. And there's a lot of people who also need help and guidance. So instead of being stuck in our selfish world of, you know, this is what we have to focus on, we can get more energy by looking up and helping other people. You know, there was a lot of times in the project where, you know, we, we get the wristband, you know, that, that signifies that we're the particular leader of this particular evolution. And I've had my wristband taken away twice. That feeling is, is not good, you know, to just have something revoked from mm-hmm. you. Um, so I just learned to like mentally not have my, my wristband taken away, to actually want to have that put on me. So it's constantly looking up and around and seeing who needs help, who needs guidance. And again, we, we always think we're doing pretty good until we have to face it on more extreme levels. But I, I've generally been pretty good at helping other tattooers and, you know, we, we've bought books and, and gave them out and had like, you know, book meetings and sharing techniques and whatever else it is. But afterwards, one of the things in the evolutions that we had to solidify was what were we willing to die for, you know? And I know that feeling of not knowing what you want to do in life to go through a career and not have the proper guidance or the proper information um, to have to struggle. And I just made it my commitment of like helping people find that route, that path. And in particular with, with my field of tattooing, there's, there's, there's abundance in tattooing. There, there's so much room for everybody to grow. There's enough clients for everybody. There's enough skill sets and information to go around. Now it's a matter of who are they getting it from and how are they going to get it? So I started to really put a lot of my time and energy into the mentorship program of just growing any tattooer who is on that wavelength of just improving themselves in every single aspect and the idea of being a savage servant to just serve another human being of helping them become the best version possible. Um, Now for this particular class, we have three tattooers from my mentorship program. One guy who's lost 150 pounds, another one who started to run every day and another one who's becoming more open with communication you need to be well-rounded in life to be good at your craft. So it's just a matter of helping people get those tools from like-minded people or people who are elevated above where you're at. So that was what I was willing to die for, was to be a better person to help guide tattooers to have a more fulfilled lifestyle and really become who they want to be. Um, They don't necessarily need to do the project, but for those who are willing to do it, um, that, that's just the, the, that next route that they're willing to do. But, uh, I, I just knew I was ready to just help people on a regular basis from now on. I love what you just said about the wristband, how now in life you decided you made the decision that you're not letting anyone revoke your wristband ever again. Yeah. Like you're going to be the captain of your fucking ship. You're going to be the CEO of your life from now on. And for someone to take that wristband off your wrist, they'll have to fucking kill you is yeah. basically what you just said. That's what yeah. you're willing to die for. That's some awesome stuff. I love that. I love it. Love it. So let's talk about now the brotherhood. Like you just did, you ran with these guys yesterday mm-hmm. and the junior instructors that are here now with you. How many of those guys have you never met before? Uh, Probably a few. Yeah, there's several of them. Yep. When you're meeting these guys for the first time, previous other graduates of the project, and you have some interactions online and stuff, meeting some of these guys for the first time or maybe second time, whatever, what, what is that relationship like? What does it mean to you to be part of the brotherhood, have those kind of guys you to go do a run with you? Like, you just ran with those guys yeah. 
the ones even from your class, you only met yeah. them just a year ago. You knew none of them yeah, previously, yeah. right? And now you're doing these kind of things. So what does yeah. it mean to you to be part of that brotherhood and how has that impacted your life? For my particular class, I, I'm closer with a lot of those uh, gentlemen who I've went through 75 hours with than most people I've known for years of my life. You know, there's a sort of bonding that you have through that suffering, you know, and it's anybody who's gone through some sort of trauma or struggle together, you have something. And I, I didn't really understand the military bonding, you know, of people who've been on the battlefield, um, what that bonding was like. Um, so I, I understood a little bit more with the people in my particular class. I didn't know that there was a brotherhood. I didn't know that there was going to be a Facebook group that we had to check into regularly. Um, I wasn't even keen on a men's support group or anything, but that's kind of what it is, is, you know, individuals who are willing to open up and just say, hey, I, I need some help. I need some guidance. Other men who are, are willing to share their experience and their feedback and insight so that they can with no other benefit other than to just want to help another human being. Um, that's been very powerful for me to just have that space to just share what pretty much ranking our four Fs. Mm -hmm. What is it like with our family, our fitness, our finance and our faith? And if we're struggling, no one's ever perfect in all four. Uh, once we're struggling with something, someone can kind of chime in or you can have that one-on-one -on -one phone call with somebody. Um, we can go on runs and we can talk about it. Um, and those guys you just ran with yesterday, I just read, now I'm thinking about it. I didn't even realize yesterday it didn't even cross my mind because graduates are graduates. I know who mm -hmm. graduated each class, but once yeah. we get together, it's like they're just a bunch of brothers, a bunch of family. Yeah. There was, was that four of you from your class that yeah, were there, yeah. right? Yeah. That, uh, f and then one guy, uh, Todd in Seattle, he ran a marathon just because we were running one. You know, so that, that, that's how connected our group is. Um, when we did the bike ride, there was six of us. You know, when we go to Vegas, there were seven of us. So out of the, the nine of us that have made it, like we typically always get together. And, you know, we, after every project, if someone junior instructors, we get on the phone and we just talk about what did you learn? How are you growing? How are you gonna apply this information? And that's one of the reasons why I'm here too, is just to want to see the project from the other side. And you're here for it, entertainment. You just yeah. wanna sit behind the lines and no, you're gonna get, you're gonna get just as much as you did when you're going through it or even more. Cause yeah. now it's from a, a second time going through, you're gonna catch on to so many other lessons. You're at a different point in life now. Yeah, yeah. You're gonna get so much going through. I'm excited for what you're gonna what you're gonna get in these next four days coming up. Awesome stuff. So let, let's just finish off with what would you say, what, what kind of advice would you give to these gentlemen that are about to go through this class tomorrow that you'll be, you know, you'll be helping out as a junior instructor? What are some two or three pieces of advice you'd give them for how to not just make it through the project, but just it's going to be the same advice for how to make it through fucking life. Yeah. What would you tell them? Your, your why has to be solid. You know, why you want to do this? Why do you want to get better? Like, there, there is nothing physical that you're going to achieve out of this. You, know, you may get some strength or you may get some scarring, whatever, but the, the mental is where you're, you're really going to have to develop and figure out, like, what is your why, your reason, your purpose that's going to allow you to go through these 75 hours. And even after that, whatever you choose to do, be it a marathon, climbing a mountain, uh, whatever, like, you have to have a purpose or reason. Otherwise, it's going to be very easy to just quit. Your relationship, why be with that person? Why be a good father? You know, and you just have to dig deep down and figure your mental reasoning to get through something. So that why has to be solid. Everyone's why is going to be different. It doesn't have to be about another person either. It could just be like, how could you look at yourself in the mirror without accomplishing X? You know, so just knowing your reason is very big. Um, number two, don't hyper focus on the pain but also don't look at the big picture of, oh my God, 75 hours. Oh my God, we're running 31 miles. It's just one step at a time. It's one evolution at a time. It's one minute at a time. All you have to do is just put one foot in front of the other and just try a little bit longer. Um, regardless of what you set them up for, for those 75 hours, you're here for that long. So just enjoy the moment and just, you have to have fun and you, you have to want to be there. Otherwise, the more you just go into this place of darkness and just hating it and Fuck these guys and I'm thinking of the yeah. shit you get an opportunity yeah. to do. How much fun, like when you really look at it and like you volunteered it, like, for this. Fucking privilege. Yeah. Like this is this is some fun shit we're doing. It might sort of suck, but this is fucking fun. Yeah. And a, a lot of us have said we wish we could do something like this again. But we know that once you graduate, you can't ever go through the project again because now you kind of know like the, the sauce, you know the magic behind it. But I think that's why we come back to be the junior instructors so that we can be able to like re-engage in it. But now, like, without being physically beat down, mm -hmm. as far as what they're doing, we're going to have our own sort of uh, mental struggles to just be awake as long as they are and, and to get the setup and everything going.
That's awesome stuff. So, Andy, where where can the followers out there and the viewers of the show find you online, Instagram? Or what's the best place to reach you and contact you? Uh, most places, just at Andy Foe. So on Instagram, you know, what, my website, my email, everything's just Andy Foe. So if you just search that. Um, uh, I'm just very uh, grateful to have shared this opportunity with everyone in this project. And, uh, yeah, I, I've got nothing more to say other than just to look forward to what's to come this week. Awesome. Thanks for coming on and excited for you to help us out this week coming up. So this has been another episode of the MDK Project Show. If any of this stuff resonated with you, and I'm going to go back and rewatch this, and I'm learning just as much from this interview as anyone else, just check the link below. Make sure you subscribe and follow to this channel. If you know, and somewhere deep in your gut, you know that you have been holding back, you have been being a little bitch in different areas of life, you do need to level up and become an even better husband, an even better father, an even better leader, entrepreneur, business owner, whatever it is, just reach out, we'll schedule an interview call to see if you are a good fit for the project. It's definitely not for everyone, we'll get on the phone and see if you have what it takes to join the MDK Brotherhood. I will talk to you next time, you are freaking awesome, no excuses.